Every year at Adobe Max we get these amazing updates to the entire Adobe suite of products including Adobe XD and this year has been no different and oh my god did they not disappoint. In this video I'm going to show you what's new in Adobe XD and what you can do with these new updates. Make sure to subscribe to the channel not to miss out future videos because there is a lot that you can do with these new updates and a lot of ideas are coming into my head so if you don't want to miss that content make sure to subscribe and let's get started. Hey designer, Alex here, welcome to the channel and welcome to this Adobe XD updates video. This is the design that I created previously here on the channel, link is going to be down in the description below, you can check it out how it was created, but I'm using it for the sole purpose uh, in this video to show you these amazing new updates that Adobe XD team has brought for October 2021. First one is the video. So before I show you the video, let me quickly show you the prototype. So here is my prototype and I can click right here to create this menu. I have this nice hover effect on my button. I can click right here to show you this and I can also expand this on click. But in this video, I want to show you these new updates. So to get started, first things first, let me show you the structure. So we have the content, we have the newsletter, which is this uh, with the default state and clicked state. And we also have the menu with the default state and the clicked state. Once again, if you want to check out full breakdown, you can see the video link is going to be down in the description below. Now to get started, as I said, first things first, First is the video. So as you can see I have image number one and for this slide two I have the image number two. Obviously image number one is going to zero in opacity and the vice versa in the default state the image number two is going to go zero in opacity. So how can we change that? Well make sure to stay on the default state and I'm going to simply drag and drop a video inside. I have this nice video from Envato Elements. I'm going to drag it reposition it into place right here and I'm going to change its place all the way down below my gradient so my gradient can cut this and just to avoid uh, any kind of mess up later I'm going to simply lower down the opacity of my original image down to zero like this and then I'm going to do the same thing in the slide number two I'm going to come in right here and I'm going to lower the opacity of this video all the way to here come right here and drag and drop the video number two in place like so position it just below my gradient so once again the same story and i'm going to lower down the opacity of my original image once again just to avoid any kind of mess up so just to be sure i'm going to uh, come back to my default state and i'm going to show you the options you have with video so first things first videos should be about 15 megabytes in size Make sure when you're dropping videos to choose your orientation. So if you're working with uh, mobile app screens, make sure it's a portrait video. If you're working with websites like we are doing in this case, make sure it's a landscape video and the limit they have at the moment for file size is 15 megabytes. They are doing this just to make sure because videos are huge in size, especially 4K and 8K videos and stuff like that. So they are limiting the cap to 15 megabytes. I'm going to leave the link to free video compressor down in the description below you guys can check it out and I uh, downloaded this video from Envato Elements as I said I'm going to link the uh, elements down below as well and I compressed it and I got to the size of 15 megabytes so with that out of the way here we have the control so when you select the video number one you can see play on tap play automatically and no playback at all. You can also edit playback to choose these different sort of options. You can see so tap video, toggle play, pause. You can do all these things. But going back to the design, what I want to do is play automatically. This is going to simply loop it and you can customize the video. You can scrub through here to see what the video is, where it's going to start, where it's going to end. You can loop playback if you want to. I'm going to do just that, so click right there. And you can also trim it. So you can click right here, you can drag to trim the video. When you're happy with it, you can either select this to say yes and save trim or cancel the trim and simply go outside. So when you're ready, that's basically it. Now I need to go to my slide number two and do the same for this second video. So video number two. Instead of play on tap, I want to play it automatically and I can also jump in right here and trim if I want to. I want to loop playback uh, in case my uh, audience wants to stay on this slide for longer and they want to, for example, read this text for a little bit longer and stuff like that. So now let's hit preview and you can see how this looks like. 
So straight away, we have this nice looking website, which just looks amazing just by addition of these videos. I think this update is huge because as you can see, still everything works. Everything works. I can click right here to the menu and you can see how it's overlapping in the background. Looks just amazing. And also when I click right here, it's going to transition to this video, which is going to start immediately. And we still have all of these options ready. And when I click right here, you can see with the blur, it now blurs this part of the video, which I think is amazing. Next up, we have Loti animations. Now these Loti animations are a fantastic addition to Adobe XD. And if I show you, these are lightweight scalable animations for your ads and social media, websites, apps, and stuff like that. You can see introducing Loti files for Adobe XD because this was just announced yesterday. So what you can do is create a free account right here because Loti files are generally free, but they also have Discover, they have Marketplace, so you can purchase these. And I can also give you the links down in the description below for UI8 and Envato elements for some awesome Loti animations I found. But if you scroll down just a little bit, you can see they are 600% smaller than compared to GIF and 10, 10 times faster to ship. Code is much more simpler. You can see some examples right here and you can also click discover animation and take all of these animations that you choose and you can see you can create these animations, for example, in After Effects, ship them then to Loti files and then incorporate them later in Adobe XD. Speaking of XD, what you can do with these is you can come right here to a plugins panel. You can install this Loti files for Adobe XD. And if you don't have it, you can click right here to add it, then go to search, type in Loti press enter and there it is. You can simply click install if you didn't already because you see I did, it shows me that. Now what you can do with Loti files, it's quite simple. You can come right here and you can see all of these um, amazing animations showing up. I can go to featured for example, and you can see these loaders, icon animations, check marks, cart animations and stuff like that. What I want to do for this thing right here, because if I take you back right here, and show you the newsletter. In the clicked state, what I did is I included different icon than in my default state. So in my default state, I just include this icon, so email icon, and this is my Loti file, which is hidden at the moment, opacity in the default state. And in the clicked state, as you can see, it's shown, so opacity is at 100%. So what I did right here is came to the plugins to Loti files and typed in, for example, news letter, press enter. And I went to the second page, if I remember correctly. And here is my icon. So I just use this icon, you can simply drag and drop it into place like this. And you can see it just placed it right there. What I did is I simply reduced the size until my size matches the original icon. So you can see roughly this is the animation. And this is the default state, so they are roughly matching. Once again, what I did in the original state, I uh, had this opacity at 100 for the original icon, and inside of the clicked state for the original icon, it's 0%, and for the email, it's 100%. Now, what you can actually do with this icon, basically, it's quite similar with the video. What you have right here is the loop playback, so directly from here. You have play on tap, so once people actually tap on it, it's going to start playing play automatically and no playback. You can edit playback and then adjust it to see the lengths, to see all of these things. So we have the time trigger. You can introduce the delay. You can see Loti playback. So that's the type and playback is the play, but you can also pause, toggle play, pause and do all kinds of these different things. So what I did right here, if I go to default state, if I preview it once again, when users click right here, as you can see, it's going to transition from the original icon and go to this Loti file animation and the animation is going to play just to entice my users a little bit, hopefully to sign up for my newsletter. If I want to hide it, simply click right here. And as you can see, it transitions back nicely to the original icon. Great thing about this is it works on both slides because it's a separate component. You can see it starts animating right here. And I think that just these two changes are going to bring a massive change to how designers work in Adobe XD and it's going to bring you a lot of amazing possibilities. Next up, we have new export features. So if I go back to here and if I, for example, hide my video for a second and go back to my image, show my image, hit Ctrl or Command E on my keyboard. And for example, I want to export this as a PNG. Now these are new. You have the export size. 
So if I click right here, you can see we can export it as half the original size, one and a half times the size, two times, three times, four, and then we have web, iOS, and Android. And if I select web, for example, you can see export size web, it will export for 1x, 2x, like so. For iOS, 1 to 3x, and for Android, it's going to export into all of these sizes. Once again, you can export it as 1x, which is the original size if you want to, and it's going to be just a tad different for the JPEG because you have the quality, so you can reduce the quality and that's going to in turn reduce the file size of this particular image, but still you have all of these export sizes, but just for the web because JPEG is not supported at the moment for iOS and Android just for the web, but that's completely fine, you can export your images as PDF or PNG. Finally, we have the SVG and we have this nice option, which is optimized minified, which is going to have your file size a lot smaller than the original were, and you can include outline stroke if you want to. And finally, the last change that they introduced is export to Behance. This is a nice addition if you're sharing your work to Behance. Simply in the design tab, select your artboard, click right here. And once it generates the prototype link, you have this new option right here. So you can see we have Behance option. And when I hover, you can see share on Behance. What this is going to do, it's going to integrate this prototype directly into your presentation on Behance. It used to be that you have to embed the code for this clickable prototype into your presentation and you couldn't get the right fit, you couldn't get the right width, for example. But in this case, it's going to integrate directly into that presentation, which is going to be quite a nice touch, especially if you're working in Adobe XD, preparing your entire presentation. So now you can simply upload that presentation and simply embed this prototype directly so your viewers and users can interact with it directly on Behance. So that's been it. Hopefully you like the changes and hopefully you see and you get some ideas as to what you can do with your designs. Hopefully Adobe XD team will in the future include update where we can export native XD animations to Loti because I think that that would be amazing feature to add to our workflow with developers because that way developers can just take the Loti code and incorporate it into their workflow. I hope you liked this video. A lot more like this to come in the future so if you haven't already make sure to subscribe to the channel i upload new videos every single week about adobe xd design tips passive income techniques and a lot more so if you enjoy content like that make sure to check it out make sure to subscribe and i'll see you in the next video take care